A quick hello to all you folks out there on YouTube. Uh, my name is Mr. Hempel and I'm a teacher candidate um, and I will be doing a lab for you today uh, to demonstrate the extraction of DNA from kiwi fruit. Uh, so we'll be covering what materials are needed and the methods exactly to complete the laboratory activity. Um, so with no further ado, we'll get started on the materials. Okay, so what are you going to need to complete this lab? So the first thing you'll need is a kiwi fruit. Okay, so just your everyday variety kiwi from the grocery store. You will also need five grams of hand soap. Uh, what I would recommend is liquid hand soap. Unfortunately, I don't have any at my disposal for today, so I'm just going to be using a bar of ivory soap, which I'm going to have to shave up a little bit, um, and you'll understand why later. I will also need some salt. So here I have a bag of salt. We only need two grams, so I definitely have more than I need, um, but that's something you'll have to have. You're also going to need access to tap water. We do need 300 milliliters of tap water for this lab. Um, furthermore, you're going to need 100 milliliters of ethanol. So here I've got my ethanol. Um, if you don't have ethanol, you can also use uh, some form of alcohol. A white rum or a methylated spirit is uh, your best bet for that. Um, I will need a glass stir rod, so I've got that here. I need three 300 milliliter beakers, so there's one for you. Um, I'm actually working with 250 milliliter beakers. Something in this size range is applicable. You'll also need two 1,000 milliliter beakers, um, so that's what I've got here and here. You'll notice this one, I've already got my ice bath prepared. I'm just being proactive to get that done early. You're also going to need a mortar and pestle. This is for grinding up the kiwi when we get to that stage. You will need some filter paper. So I'm just going to be using coffee filters. They work just fine for this experiment. So coffee filters is good. You will need a hot plate. So I've got my hot plate here. You're going to need some ice. Uh, shaved is preferable. If you do have cubed ice instead, just add a bit of water to it uh, to make your ice bath. You will need a thermometer. So I've got a mercury-free glass therm thermometer right here. And lastly, you will need a knife. So that's it for the materials. So once you've got everything collected and laid out in front of you, we can get started. So let's move on to the methods. Okay, so now that you've got all of your uh, materials laid out in front of you, you're able to get started. Now, I have taken the liberty of jumping ahead a few steps just to pick, uh, speed this video up a little. I don't want it to take 30 minutes just to watch the video. Um, so for your first step, you'll notice that it, you need to fill a 1,000 milliliter beaker um, with approximately 200 milliliters of water and some shaved ice to make an ice bath. I've already done that here. Um, so just very simply add some ice and some water to a 1,000 milliliter beaker. Um, to that, you will need to add your beaker with ethanol. We do need to work with chilled ethanol for this lab. So what you're going to need to do is, from your ethanol stock solution, um, put a little over 100 milliliters, just in case anything evaporates, into a 250 or 300 milliliter beaker. Um, then place that beaker into your ice bath uh, so that it can cool. While that's cooling, you can go ahead and prepare your um, hot water bath. This is the hot water bath that we'll need to actually heat our, our mixture of kiwi and extraction buffer. Um, and that needs to be 60 degrees Celsius. So you can see here on my hot plate, I've got a, another 1,000 milliliter beaker. Uh, it's got about 250 milliliters of water in it. Um, and you'll also notice that I have a thermometer sticking out of the top. That's just so I can measure the temperature and make sure I'm at my 60 degree mark that I need to use. Um, once you've got those two things set up, you'll be able to get started with actually peeling your kiwi and mashing it. Um, so again, I've taken the liberty of pre-peeling my kiwi and cutting it into small chunks. But you can see here, I have my mortar and pestle. Um, and inside, I just have some kiwi fruit that has been chopped up into little bit bits. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mash that up using the pestle. Okay, 
So now I've got my kiwi in a nice mash. Um, the better you break it up, the better the experiment will work because you're increasing the surface area of your kiwi fruit cells um, to better the chances that you'll be able to get more DNA extracted from them. So make sure you've got that um, as a nice fine mush. Once you've finished, you can then transfer the crushed kiwi into one of your 300 milliliter beakers. So I'm just going to use my glass stir rod to do that and make life a little bit easier. Okay, so you can see there that I've got mashed up kiwi in a 250 milliliter beaker. The next step you'll need to do is to create your extraction buffer. So to do that, you'll need two grams of salt and five grams of hand soap. Um, like I said previously, the liquid hand soap is preferred. In my case, I'm working with a solid soap, so I will have to make sure that it fully dissolves. Um, but basically, take five grams of salt and five grams of hand soap, or, pardon me, five grams of hand soap and two grams of salt. Add them to your 250 milliliter beaker, and then to this, we're going to add 100 milliliters of water, of just regular tap water, um, and mix that until it's fully dissolved. So you can see I've got my extraction mixture in there. It's not fully dissolved, so I'm going to have to stir it until everything is fully dissolved. Um, make sure you are stirring slowly so that you don't form a lot of bubbles, um, as they'll simply get in your way later. Okay, so I now have my extraction buffer completely mixed. Um, so that's my 100 milliliters of water my two grams of salt and my five grams of liquid hand soap. As I said earlier, I've already matched up my kiwi into my kiwi mash, which I placed into a 300 milliliter beaker. So now what I need to do is add the extraction buffer I've made to my kiwi mash. And then take my kiwi mash and extraction buffer and place it into my hot water bath. Again, it's important to make sure that your hot water bath is at 60 degrees. So check my thermometer, I'm at 60 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna place my kiwi and extraction buffer into the hot water bath and leave it there for 15 minutes. It is important that the kiwi does reach the full 60 degrees Celsius before you remove it. So make sure that you're taking the temperature of your mixture um, while it's in the bath. Okay, so I've added that in, and I'll catch you guys in 15 minutes. Alrighty folks, so welcome back. Um, so we've now waited 15 minutes. I've had my kiwi fruit and extraction buffer in my hot water bath at 60 degrees for that full 15 minutes. Um, and if you notice, it has broken down and become a nice, very, very mushy green liquid. Um, what I'm going to now do with that is filter it into another clean 300 milliliter beaker through some coffee filter paper. Um, you can also use regular laboratory filter paper, whichever you have at your disposal. Um, and what we should get in the bottom of the clean beaker is a nice green liquid, and that green liquid is going to contain our DNA from the kiwi fruit. So I'll go ahead and do this now. So you can see I'm only adding little bits at a time. It's just to avoid making a lot of mess. Okay, so that's it for filtering. 
Um, you can see I now have just some waste kiwi and my filter paper. So that can just be thrown out. Um, it can just go into the regular garbage. There's no need for neutralization or uh, there's no hazardous waste in there. Um, so you've now got a sort of opaque green liquid that you've uh, filtered through. To that liquid, we're going to add our chilled ethanol. Um, and you'll notice that when you do that, it's going to form a separate layer on top of what's currently in there. And the best way to do this is to pour the ethanol down the edge of the beaker containing the kiwi mixture. So don't pour it directly into the center. You don't want it to mix. You want it to form two layers. Okay, so I've added my alcohol. It is a little bit turbid, um, so it's difficult to see at this point. So I'm going to let it settle for a minute and form into nice two very easy to distinguish layers within my beaker. And in between those layers, I should start seeing my DNA forming, and it'll look like a chunky white uh, sort of substance. Um, and when you start to see that, that's your kiwi DNA. So we'll take another pause in the video. And when I come back, I will have my fully formed DNA. All right, so I've given the kiwi fruit mixture and alcohol a little bit of time to settle. And you can see that it's formed two distinct layers. The top layer being the more white opaque layer and the bottom layer being a little bit clearer and a bit more green. Now, what's making that top layer of alcohol cloudy is the fact that it's full of our DNA. So what we can actually do is, using a paper clip, we can reach in and carefully scoop out our DNA. So that, what I've got hanging right on the end of this hook, is my kiwi fruit DNA. So a lot of students oftentimes have a hard time envisioning what DNA might look like, so this is a great experiment to show them. So, I hope you have enjoyed this lab, and if you have any further questions, feel free to contact me through my YouTube page. Thanks a lot. Bye.